Today we'll show you how to replace the speed controller for the Swaktron EB5 electric bike. This bike's maximum speed is only about 15 miles per hour. I cannot just tell my boss every day the reason why I come to work late is because my bike is too slow. Or maybe I should tell him so that he can buy me a new electric bike. What do you reckon? But because I don't want to be jobless, I'm going to do something else to make my bike faster. And that's going to be as simple as replacing my bike's speed controller. Sounds simple, right? So there are a few ways you can achieve a faster speed with your e-bike. First is you can hack your controller and reinforce the connections on the controller to make it thicker with more solder or extra copper wires. Because thicker conductors can carry more current and therefore they can achieve more speed with more current going through it. This method might work on some controllers only. I know you can do this with the Razer electric scooter. But I'm not sure about this particular e-bike though. Looking at the size of this controller, I don't feel like I want to push it any more than it's designed for. The second way to increase the speed is to increase the voltage of your battery. This cannot be done on this bike because there's absolutely no more room for a bigger battery pack inside the battery compartment. That leads me the last method is to replace with a whole new controller. And that's what I'm going to do next. So to remove the controller, fold the bike in half and remove the four screws. Next, you have to disconnect the cable that goes to the motor on the side of the bike. This will allow you to pull the controller out of the housing. There are no connectors on the controller for the wires leading to the motor because of the cramped space inside the housing. So they actually solder the motor wires directly to the controller. So the only way to disconnect the main cable is to cut it. Once you disconnect all the connectors leading to the controller, now you can remove it and put in a new controller. The main cable leading to the motor has three prong cable and a hall sensor cable. I tried to make some connectors for the main cable, but it doesn't look like there's enough space for these connectors inside the housing. So I'm going to have to solder it directly to the controller. That shouldn't be a problem. But the problem here is that the hall sensor cable has six pins for the motor. Whereas the whole sensor cable on the new controller only has 5 pins. So I went ahead and installed the whole sensor cable anyway and ignored the last pin which is the white wire on the motor cable. The wires on the whole sensor cable are color coded. So all I got to do is to match the color of all of the wires and I'm good to go. Alright, so I've got everything connected together here and I'll show you how to put everything together, one connector at a time. First thing is the power connector and it has three wires, looks like this. And the two thicker wires will go to the main terminal of the battery. There is a smaller wire, the red wire, this is the switch. So when this wire is connected to the main positive red wire, the motor will turn on. Otherwise, the motor will be normally off. But I'll show you how to connect this to the power switch for this bike in a little bit. The next wire is a three-phase power wire that goes to your motor. And all you gotta do is match these three colors to your motor wire and you're good to go. The next wire is the hall sensor wire. On the controller, it's got five uh, pins only on the uh, wire that goes to your motor on this bike it has six pins but all you gotta do is to match the color of these five pins the extra six pin on this uh, bike is white and this doesn't have white and it only has five so just ignore the white color on this bike's uh, wire and you should be good to go the next wire you have to connect is the brake wire this is the Chinese label and that is the Google Translate. So it's got two wires. So basically how it works is if these two wires are connected together, it will cut power to the motor. So, but on this controller, it only has one connector. On the bike itself, it has two connectors, the front and rear brake. And these are the brake connectors for this bike. They are small connectors with red and black wires. So here is the brake cables. I just connect both wires together. So both red wires together. 
go into the white wire down below put black wires together go into the black wire go into the controller and I tried it and it works just fine like this and last but not least the speed selector wire it's got three wires black brown and blue so basically if you sort out black and brown you can run at lower speed or you sort out black and blue you can run at higher speed ignore this translation it's kind of raw that's what it looks like so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut this wire and permanently attach the black and blue pins so that I can run at a faster speed so here's a test I've done earlier so if I connect the blue and black wires together I can achieve a 3% increase in speed relative to the normal speed and normal speed means you just leave this wire alone and you don't short any pins and according to my calculation it will give me about 23 miles per hour when it's not under loads but that's only no load speed it's going to be a bit less when I have my donkey over here on the seat but hopefully it's going to be a little bit more than the original 15 miles per hour finger cross so next let me show you how to connect the thorough cable to the controller the thorough on this bike is a little bit more complicated than a regular e-bike because not only does it have a throttle it also has a battery gauge and a power button so the connector with the five pins that has five small wires in there that's the throttle connector and it stays way in there because the wire is too short and I can't pull it out so I have to use these pins here to extend the wire these are the pins I use and the color on these pins correspond correctly with the color inside the connector so we got five wires that are black red blue yellow and white so the first three wires on this connector they are black red and blue you can see there and these three wires will go to the throttle cable except that the throttle cable has a green wire and the green wire will go to the blue and the other two wires they are matching in color so the next wire is the yellow wire and that is the switch so we'll go to the switch on the power connector which is the small red wire the last wire is the white wire which will go to the main positive of the system this wire will go to the positive of the battery I wrote down some notes here to make it easier to remember so the three wires black red and blue they are thorough cable the yellow wire is a switch on off switch which will connect to main but it's normally off so that is the switch wire white wire connect to main positive which is permanently on so basically when you push on the red switch to turn on the bike you're actually connecting these two wires together let's give it a try shall we these connectors here take a lot of space inside the housing here so it's not gonna have room for the connectors and the controller so what I have to do is to cut I think I'm gonna remove all of these connector I just have to cut the wires remove the connector and solder the wire directly to the controller and that way it can save a lot of room the rest of the connectors I'm just gonna cut it because I don't use them right so I have soldered almost all the wires together this is the main power cable it goes to the motor it has three phase wire and the hall sensor cable and I extend the wire a little bit longer okay. and these are the two connectors that I cut from next one is the main power cable 
this is the one I cut and I also extend it a little bit longer XT60 connector so I can plug in and unplug it next one is the speed sensor cable and I solder permanently the blue and black cables together so I have only two connectors left the throttle connector and the brake connector so I just have to cut this and solder the cables straight onto the cables on the bike because I cannot do it on the bench for those two cables also the throttle cable on the bike has five wires so these are uh, the three the fourth one is the power which I cut out from this connector okay. this is permanent the main positive voltage the red wire and also this wire is the switch wire which is from this wire on the power connector the rest of the connectors on this controller are not needed so I just cut them and then uh, put some heat shrink to protect the wires from sorting out and show you how much space I save by cutting the wires and the dimension of this controller 4 and 5 8 inches long 2 and 3 quarter inch and it is 1 and 3 8 inches thick so here is the brake cables and next to it is the throttle cable you see I have solder and heat shrink all five wires together well trying to push the controller inside the housing the wires are through just fine but the controller is about one and a half to two centimeters too long and I cannot push this in so I just went ahead and remove the cover so that I have some space inside the controller you can see there it does have some space so all of this thing here, especially the XT60 connector, can have room to get inside that space. It's not going to short out anything inside the controller, because everything here is insulated. The connector, the wires are all insulated. Got some foam here, just going to push it in here to insulate the board, protect the board a little bit, just in case. Now and push it in, make sure the black wire is on the top, red wire on the bottom, and just push it in. There we go, we're in. Ready for the test. This number on the top here is the speedometer, so pay attention to this number on the top here. I got my GoPro ready and my camera holding on the other hand. Fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19 19 and a half That's pretty good 19 and a half All right, here we go. Second run. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen point eight, nineteen twenty. Woo. Twenty point one. Oh, my God. So there you have it. The original controller only gives me about 15 miles per hour maximum speed. This new controller gives me up to 20 miles per hour.
That's a 33% increase in speed. Not only does it give me a faster terminal speed, it also takes much less time to achieve terminal speed. This is like adding a turbo charge to a regular engine. It makes it worth the time and money I invested in this upgrade. Now I can come to work on time and hopefully become an employee of the month for coming early to work early every day. I don't need a new e-bike anymore, but I do need a secondary battery because increasing speed will greatly reduce the range of this bike. So instead of having like 12 miles of range, now because I can go faster, I might only get about 10 miles or less. So I might not come to work late because of being too slow, but because I cannot get there before my battery dies. So my next project is to install a secondary battery to increase the range on this bike. Man, this upgrading game is never gonna end, is it? At the meantime, I can enjoy my new rocket and hopefully I can still arrive at work before my battery runs out. Twenty and a half? Oh my god! 